What's up gamers, welcome back to another episode of Video Game Gems. I'm Ginge the Ripper, let's play a game. If I had to describe Uncharted 4 in a single word, that word would be satisfying. Everything from the narrative, to the gameplay, to the smaller details are refined in such a way that the game is fluent. Everything flows together so well that once you've immersed yourself within the game, it's hard to break out of. The concept of the Uncharted series is similar to National Treasure, if you've ever seen those movies. The series revolves around a thief named Nathan Drake, searching for the legendary treasure of famous individuals across history. Nathan, along with his allies, have to use their brains and skills to overcome the dangers of Uncharted territory as each clue leads them closer to the treasure. Of all the games thus far, Uncharted 4 is objectively the best of the five. You mean the best of the six? A young Nathan is living a miserable life in the St. Francis Boys' Home, a Catholic orphanage slash boarding school for young boys. One night, he sneaks out to spend time with his older brother, Sam, a child in his late teens who used to live at the orphanage with Nathan until he was thrown out for his delinquent behavior. Since then, Sam has been working hard to build stability for himself so he can eventually remove Nathan from the orphanage. Sam was recently offered a job with a big payout. Unfortunately, the job requires him to leave town for a year, which also means leaving Nathan behind. To make up for it, Sam takes him on one last goodbye adventure. A few years later, Nathan and Sam are young adults. With the help of a man named Rafe Adler, the brothers sneak into a Panama prison in search of a clue to the whereabouts of Henry Avery's treasure, a notorious English pirate with a treasure haul at an estimated worth of $400 million. However, the heist does not go as planned. After getting into an argument with the warden, Rafe stabs him, leading to a chase between the gang and the faculty of the prison as they make a run for the shore where their getaway vehicle is hidden. In the process, Sam is shot and presumed dead, forcing Nathan and Rafe to leave him behind. Fifteen years later, we catch back up to the present after the events of the first three games. Don't you mean the first four games? Nathan Drake, now in his 40s, has settled down with a woman named Elena Fisher, with a steady job working for a salvage company. Content with his life, Nathan has given up the life of a thief, until his dead brother comes knocking on the door. Sam survived the escape attempt and was left to rot in the depths of the prison for the way things played out. Fifteen years later, Sam escaped with the help of his cellmate, Hector Alcazar, a crime lord who'd been planning his escape since he was incarcerated. After telling Alcazar about Avery's treasure, Alcazar agrees to take Sam with him, just to double-cross him after they make it out. Alcazar wants a majority cut of Avery's treasure, giving Sam three months to find it. If he fails, Alcazar will track Sam down and kill him. The trail went cold for Nathan and Rafe all those years ago, as the clue they found at the prison was hollow and missing a key piece of information. Over time, the two grew a hatred and distrust for each other, leading to them parting ways. With Sam back into the picture, a new piece of the puzzle is found, and the hunt for Avery's treasure is now a race against the brothers and Rafe. The game is divided into sections with three different types of gameplay, platforming, fighting, and puzzle solving. In platforming sections, you'll climb, slide, jump, and rope from one structure to the next as you slowly progress through Uncharted territory. Uncharted 4 added sliding and roping to enhance the platforming sections, making them more engaging. Sliding and roping have been used in past games to add intensity to climatic scenes, but this was the first time they were used as gameplay mechanics. In fighting sections, enemies are scattered throughout the area for Nathan and Co. to take out. There are several ways to subdue an enemy. You can take them out stealthfully by hiding behind obstacles and sneaking up behind them. If an enemy manages to spot you while you're close, you can engage in a fist fight or hide behind cover and shoot them. As someone who enjoys stealth killing, Uncharted 4 has refined the mechanic in a way that is fair. One of my biggest complaints with older titles is that stealth killing is almost impossible, unless you're playing on a lower difficulty. The enemies are too close together and inconsistent. Some of them can spot you from far away, while others won't notice you when you're right beside them. Even in places where stealth is encouraged, it's almost pointless. Contrastly, in Uncharted 4, the rules of stealth are consistent only changing slightly when playing on a higher difficulty. Each time I was spotted, felt like a mistake on my part, rather than an excuse of faulty gameplay. Stealthing has also been refined. It still takes longer than shooting the enemies, but it's a lot of fun, and with practice, you can take down enemies quickly. There are also sections where fighting is unnecessary, so if you're skilled enough, you can sneak past sections of enemies without having to fight them. Hand-to-hand -hand combat has also been refined. Character movements are fluent and quick, making each takedown satisfying. 
Nearby allies can also help you break out of a struggle, allowing you to take down enemies faster. Unlike other games in the hide-and-shoot genre, there are no ammo crates or ways to restock your ammo without stealing it from enemies. Uncharted 4 encourages the player to swap out weapons regularly and try out the different varieties. An experienced shooter may be able to use their bullets wisely and come across more ammo for the guns they have equipped without going empty. But an inexperienced player who wastes the majority of ammo for their favorite guns may find themselves walking around empty for the majority of the game. Puzzle-solving sections are twofold. You'll discover various puzzle rooms while exploring abandoned cities and ancient caverns. Some puzzles are simple and require a bit of brain thinking to solve, while others are more physical and complex, requiring your platforming skills. As you solve the puzzles, you'll learn more about the story behind Avery's treasure as a deeper mystery unfolds. There are several trinkets hidden throughout the game for the player to find. Not only are they cool collectibles to look at, they will also unlock various bonuses in-game, like spawnable guns and different character outfits. Additional bonuses can be unlocked by completing the game on harder difficulties, like Mirror Mode or Infinite Ammo. While you're running around and exploring the world, characters will converse with each other, making jokes and talking about themselves to keep the player entertained, when nothing interesting is going on. About halfway through the game, Nathan and Co. are driving through King's Bay headed to the volcano where the next clue is located. At the beginning of the section, Sully and Sam have this conversation. Hey Victor, what were you arguing with the rental guy? Oh, your brother insisted on getting a 4x4 with a winch. So you sprung for the winch, but you couldn't spring for the suspension. I got it. Hey, it's important. It's going off-road. It might rain, might be muddy. I'll bet we go through this whole goddamn thing and never use that winch. And a little while later, when the winch becomes necessary, Nathan says, Hey, did you know our car came with a winch? No, really? I didn't know. The game is full of these enjoyable interactions. Play it for yourselves to experience them all. And speaking of characters, Uncharted 4 has some of the most lovable characters across the series. In past games, Nathan and his teammates are the only characters with detail put into their personalities, while the villains are generic bad guys with cliché lines and ideologies. However, Rafe is different. He's a character with personal reasons for hunting down the treasure. After all, he doesn't need it. He inherited his parents' fortune and successful business in his 20s. He's already substantially wealthy. Rafe is searching for Avery's treasure for fame and personal accomplishment. He doesn't want to be known as the snotty rich kid who's famous because of his parents. In the underground thieving world, Rafe has learned of Nathan's adventures across the games and is jealous of his fame. And that's not all. Rafe hired a team of mercenaries called Shoreline to help him find the treasure. Their leader, Nadine Ross, cares less about the adventure and more about results preferring to blow up walls instead of solving puzzles. Because of this, we are treated to this cutscene early in the game. Or you can tell them to sit tight until I analyze the few clues that haven't been blown up. No, we can't sit around waiting any longer. All due respect, I think I have a bit more experience with this sort of thing than you do. We tried things your way. Bullshit. You've been wanting to level this place ever since we got here. No! Rafe has that same sense of adventure that Nathan has, and finds the race between his rivals thrilling. He wants to use the clues left behind by Avery to earn his treasure instead of taking shortcuts. And if that isn't cool enough, his voice actor Warren Cole has done a fantastic job voicing the character. You can tell he had fun. Guys, let's just pretend I skipped all of Sunday school. Oh... Wow. What did he tell you? Sam, what kind of story did you cook up? <laughs> hey, look, look, Nate, if it's any consolation, he duped me too. He pulled a Houdini on me, he brought you and that old man back into the mix, and I cannot lie, Sam, that really pissed me off. But, <clears throat> all behind us now. Nadine was also a fun character to get to know. As a mercenary, she has military training and is able to take on Nathan and Sam simultaneously by herself. Sam and her grow a strong hatred for each other throughout the game, because they're on opposing sides. Yet despite her fostering hatred for him, she has a mutual respect for him. We're on the verge of making history here, and you're willing to just walk off with a pittance, a fraction of what Sam's gonna get from that boat. If he can walk away from that ship alive, he can have it. Hell, I'd say he's earned it. God knows you didn't. Rafe and Nadine are easy characters to fall in love with. Even though the player is rooting for Sam and Nate, the interactions between the teams are always enjoyable, something that can't be said for most of the other games. 
While you don't need to have played all the games in the series to understand Uncharted 4, there are small details within the game that feel cliché out of context. One such detail is found at the beginning of the game when Nate refuses to tell Elena about his hunt for the treasure to save his brother. On the surface, the player thinks Nathan does this so she won't worry about him and to keep her safe. While both of these theories are true to an extent, they are not the main reason for Nathan's lie. The next few paragraphs are going to have some spoilers for Uncharted's 1 through 3. Skip through the time on the screen if you don't want to hear them. Elena was Nathan's partner in the first game. Back then, she was more interested in finding the treasure than Nathan himself, even though the treasure was part of Drake's legacy. Elena even encourages Nathan to continue the search late game when things get hairy and Nathan decides it's not worth dying over. At the end of the game, you'd expect them to hook up. However, we find out in the second game that Elena turned Nathan down. This makes sense as Nathan tried to abandon her a couple times throughout the adventure. Throughout the second game, Elena grows closer to Nathan because she's aware of how much he has changed. He is less selfish and cares more about saving lives and helping others than money. Near the end of the game, Elena is badly wounded, unsure if she's going to survive. She cries almost as if she wants to die to relieve herself of the pain. This ultimately changed her immortality complex and enthusiasm for treasure hunting and taking risks, as we find out in the third game. In Uncharted 3, we learn that Elena and Nathan got married in between games. We don't know the exact events that transpired during that time, but we do know Elena gave Nathan a choice. A choice between her or the life of a thief. Nathan ultimately chose the life of a thief because he has become hooked on the thrill of adventure. He threw away his wedding ring to convince himself that it was truly over. However, it is revealed at the end of the game that Sully kept it because he knew Nathan made the wrong choice and hung on to it, waiting to give it back to Nathan when he was ready to go back to Elena. I'm sorry. I know. That's why he refuses to tell her about the hunt for Avery's treasure. He knew if he lost her again, this time he wasn't getting her back. There are other small details in Uncharted 4 that tie into past games, and character arcs that only improve an already amazing game. With that being said, does Uncharted 4 have any flaws? None that I noticed right away. In fact, it fixes a plethora of problems I have with the other games. Uncharted 1 focused more on fighting sections than it did on platforming and puzzle solving. Uncharted 2 is widely believed to be the best game in the series, but the fans are wrong. It's not anymore. Ever since Uncharted 4 came out, it has become the second best. Fight me. It has a good balance of fighting, climbing, and puzzle solving, each one never feeling like it overshadows the other. However, its biggest flaw is that the narrative is way too similar to the first game and ends in the same way. The same can be said about the third game, which makes me appreciate them less. And I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for admitting this, but I personally believe that Golden Abyss, that horrible PS Vita game, had a better ending than the first three games. Uncharted 3 is an overall solid game through its first half, but the second half is undeniably boring. Sections go on longer than they need to, fighting scenes have an overabundance of enemies to the point where they become annoying, and the climbing sections go on long enough that they become boring. Not to mention that the ending was very underwhelming. Like Uncharted 4, Uncharted 3's main antagonist had characteristics that made her unique, but she wasn't that fleshed out. You don't even get to fight her, and her death is anticlimactic, contrary to her build-up throughout the game. Uncharted The Lost Legacy, aka Uncharted 5, is an open-world game that is primarily focused on exploration. Unfortunately, this works against the game. If the player chooses to exclusively focus on the narrative instead of exploration, the game is short and can be beaten in a few hours. Also, the legend behind the treasure is way too simple. So much so that they had to stretch it out, telling small pieces of it as you progress through the game. And the legend isn't as interesting as the legends in past games. Uncharted 4 has the best narrative of the five games. From the legend behind Avery's treasure, to the dynamic between protags and antags, the gameplay is solid and balanced. Each style of gameplay has been refined and spaced out nicely so no section drags on longer than it needs to. And each important character has so much detail put into their personality that makes the villains just as interesting as the heroes. Along with a main story, Uncharted 4 also has multiplayer modes, the first of which are a plethora of different PvP modes. King of the Hill is a game mode where two teams try to capture a small area and defend it as long as possible. Team Deathmatch is a classic PvP shooter game where you and your team try to rack up more kills than the opposing team. 
Bounty Hunter is similar to Deathmatch, however, enemies now drop pirate booty for you to pick up. The team that meets their quota first is the winner. There are other PvP modes within the game, but I didn't get to try them out as Uncharted 4's multiplayer mode isn't as popular or refined as a game like Call of Duty or Halo. However, it's still a lot of fun to play. I love that you can use your climbing skills in PvP mode. You can rope across gaps, pull other players off cliffs, and so much more. You can play as all the heroes and villains from across the series as well as unlock different outfits and accessories for them. If you have the game or plan on getting it, definitely give this mode a try. Here for treasure, for personal gain, revenge is for children. The final multiplayer mode is called Survival. It's a cooperative game mode similar to Call of Duty Zombies or the Mercenaries from Resident Evil. Players are dropped into one of the multiplayer maps and have to survive 10 waves of enemies while completing various objectives. Once you've completed the objective for a wave, you will move on to the next. As you kill enemies and complete objectives, you will acquire money that you can spend at crates to upgrade your weapons and equipment. If you fail a wave, you can retry it as many times as you need to. The number of enemies and requirements for each objective does not change if a player leaves or joins. Therefore, the more players you have, the better. Though the mode is a lot of fun, it needs some work. The enemies were designed for small shootouts in the main game, not for long offensive battles against multiple people. And having to complete objectives that have you running around the map instead of taking cover shooting enemies makes things more difficult. Even though it's not perfect, it's still a fun little challenge to try after you've finished the game. So, is Uncharted 4 a thief's end a gem? Absolutely, the main game is a treasure, with a terrific narrative, gameplay, and lovable characters. Its multiplayer modes, while not as refined as other series in the genre, are still fun for those who enjoyed Uncharted 4's platforming mechanics. So, we can definitely say that Uncharted 4 is a gem. As always, before we end the video, here are a couple fun, or lack thereof, facts about the series. An Uncharted movie came out earlier this year, starring a cast of famous actors instead of actors that actually look like the characters. The movie was well done, I enjoyed it, and it's definitely worth checking out if you're a fan of the series. However, it does not do the series a justice and doesn't hold up to the quality of the games. Lastly, Nathan Drake and Chloe Fraser skins were added to Fortnite not long after the movie's release. You can play as both their video game and movie counterparts. Thank you all so much for watching, and keep on gaming!